Thank you for joining me here on the CBC. Thank you for welcoming me into your home every week. Let's do it again. I'm Rick Mercer. I'll see you around. When Rick Mercer signed off from his TV show last April, Canadians didn't know when they'd hear from him again. Thank you very much. Well, they didn't have to wait long. Thank you. In November, he hosted the Giller Prize ceremony. A week later, he was given the key to the city he grew up in, Logie Bay, Middle Cove, Outer Cove, Newfoundland, the highest honour the municipality can award. This fall, he also published Final Report, a book offering some of the behind-the-scenes tales of his show and some of his greatest rants from the past 15 years. <laughs> I met up with Rick Mercer in Toronto to catch up. Hi. Hello. <laughs> what have you been up to? I've been traveling around the country. I do uh, live shows, but of course I've got this book. So I was writing the book and then I was editing the book and you can show the book now. And uh, I was uh, I'm out there slogging the book. I think people seem to miss you given how well the book is doing. I think that's a nice sentiment. Thank you very much. Do you feel that? Um, I think sometimes people do miss the rants because yes. on certain weeks when let's call them rant-worthy weeks. Yes. I get a lot of email or social media activity from people saying, I would like to hear a rant on this or that. And that's nice. It's always nice, you know, that you didn't outstay your welcome. Yes, that's always yeah, it good. It could be worse. Yes. They could be emailing and saying, just wanted to <laughs> say glad you're gone. <laughs> glad I have to watch well, you every week now. Yeah. Has there been a moment where you've been like, ooh, could have done a rant on that? Sure, there's been tons of those moments. Then I get on the phone and I'm on the phone, like with a friend and, ranting away and they say no you don't miss your show at all do you because I'm just like rah, 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 rah. Yeah. I, I have received text messages you have that received are sort text of messages, yes, <laughs> yes where I think that's a good line and I'm like what yeah. <laughs> I used to have a million viewers now I'll just text Rosie <laughs> one of the things you also talk about is is marijuana it is now legal yeah um, I'm not gonna ask you if you've been smoking but... well you can because I don't smoke okay. marijuana all right um, um, because of my religion. No, I just don't. I just never have. Uh, I find it amazing that nothing happened. I know. It's just amazing. Nothing happened. Yeah. The other day, I'm at the airport, and the guy takes out his laptop, and he takes out his like little plastic container of cannabis, oh, lays really? it on top of the laptop, puts his wallet there, puts his coat on top, goes to the scanner. Nothing's happened. I kind of equate it to, you know, finally getting air conditioning. People say, we should have done this 15 years ago. This is fantastic. <laughs> and when you asked Pierre Burton to roll a joint, was that 2004? Was it was the very first season of the show. And uh, I asked Pierre Burton to come on the show and roll a joint. And it, it's one of my favorite stories. And it's one of my favorite moments in my life because I got to meet Pierre Burton. And I can remember being so excruciatingly bored in grade nine detention, just like so bored that I actually picked up a Pierre Burton book and was like, oh, this is how bad my life has become, and started reading it, and I didn't put it down. Yeah. And then I ended up reading everything he ever wrote, and, uh, you know, he had a huge impact on my life and turned me into someone who was kind of interested in Canadian history, and to have him on the show was a real thrill, and uh, especially doing something like that. Hi, I'm Pierre Burton. Looking back on my career, you know, I cannot count the number of times a young man or a young woman has come up to me and said, Hey, Mr. Burton, what's the best way to roll a joint? Well, let me tell you, it's not that way. And he was quite adamant that it be real. That's the yes. thing. When, he, when I called him and I said, will you do it? And he said, yes. And he said, you bring the weed. And I hadn't thought about that. So I said, well, I've got a props department. He said, no, 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 no. I'm not going on to CBC and rolling oregano. I look like a fool. <laughs> And so there was a young man in our office, and I said, Nick, do you think? He said, already on it. Bag of weed tomorrow morning. Now, the way you distribute the mix will determine the shape of your joint. I prefer the classic cone-shaped joint, <laughs> what the young people call a coner. So the first thing Pierre Burton said to me when I went to his house was, did you bring the weed? And the last thing he said to me, he said, leave the weed. And yeah. he died not long after that. Uh, so that was like your moment with yeah. him. Yeah, well, he, he basically told me this is going to be my last time on television. And I said, no, sir, you know, you look great. You, you, I'm sure you're going to be on TV many, many times. But, yeah, that was his final appearance. And remember, Canada, it's the loose joints that tend to fall apart, leaving unsightly toke burns on your chairs or on your bow tie. <laughs> it's a tragedy we all want to avoid, don't we? 
I'm Pierre Burton, and that's how to roll a joint. We are heading into an election year. You write, and this isn't, you know, this, I agree with this, that we generally throw governments out. We don't suddenly fall in love with them. That's in one of your rants. So if you think about that, how do you think the liberals are doing? I don't know a single person who at any point in their life has uh, voted with great enthusiasm for a candidate and four years later not been disappointed. Now they still might vote for them again, but I, I, I've never experienced what that's like four years later. And boy, did, was I ever right. They've done a bang up job. Whether the country's getting ready to throw the liberals out, we usually give parties two, two terms. Yeah. Right now, I mean, there's a lot of factors, as you know. It's really, it's, it's all about the NDP. It's all about how the NDP are going to do. And, and how do you think he's doing? Jug meat? Yes, jug meat. He's got to get a seat, mm -hmm. you know, and so he's running in Burnaby. And for those Canadians who have never been to Burnaby, either has jug meat. Like, <laughs> it's a tough sell. Yeah. Like, he's not from there. Now, the, people have done this before. Joe Clark went down to Nova Scotia and ran, and Brian Mulroney did the same thing. Yeah. But that's a tough sell. Yeah, and Andrew Scheer. You know, I think their entire strategy is convincing Canadians, middle class Canadians, that Andrew Scheer is like them. So he's constantly saying, I'm like you, I'm like you. And, and I don't like that approach. Well, it's ridiculous. It's not true for starters. No. He's like, my concerns are your concerns. No, you were the speaker for many, many years. You have a car and driver. The, and a free house. And a free house. Yeah. And you have a free house now. And that's fine. I don't yeah. begrudge him of that. But don't go around telling everyone, like, my concerns are your concerns, because they're not. Yeah. And when the liberals try and frame him as Stephen Harper with a smile, what do you think of that? Well, I think he said he's Stephen Harper with a <laughs> smile. I think. I I'm think, not sure he I, has, I don't, I don't know if he has, it. but I think he's, he's probably, you know, doesn't take that as an insult. W will that be difficult to be off the air during an election? Because you, the first time we met, uh -huh. I have a photo of it. I, do, I don't know that I want to show Canadians, but I have a photo of the first time we met mm -hmm. on the 2008 election plane, okay, Jack yeah. Layton's plane. I have a really bad haircut. You look the same because you don't you. age. And you came up and started talking to me and I was quite, um, I was quite taken with you, oh, frankly. Thank you. But will, will you miss that? Unless I will, you get to do I, it again. I, don't I know. will miss that very much. Yeah. In fact, anytime there was an election and I wasn't on the air, I used to call around and find Places. a news organization that would put yeah. me on the planes. And I would very much like to do that because I think, you know, I always like to pretend to be a journalist, but I think anyone who's intrigued with being a journalist is certainly intrigued with covering a federal election and being on those planes. And do you worry about people's engagement or disengagement from that world and and well I'll ask you about Donald Trump after but I wonder if it's related to that people sort of starting to you know I'm not sure they all always like politicians but starting to question things uh, in light of sort of the climate we're in the climate we're in is so unique because Donald Trump is obviously sucking the oxygen out of the room and so when you're talking about issues that are affecting Canadians uh, it's harder and harder to have a Canadian view of a Canadian issue because there's this this giant force out there yeah. that some see as incredibly negative and there's just so much chaos and chaos is going to draw everyone's attention. There's a train wreck happening so everyone's going to go look at the train wreck but I don't think it's very healthy and it doesn't help us here when we're, we have you know our own country to run and we have our own leaders and our own decisions that we have to make. So it's, it's a challenge for sure. Do you think, though, that he is damaging political discourse and that that is leaking into this country in any way? Oh, I think one of the unfortunate things I've witnessed in, over my lifetime is people uh, have less and less faith in these institutions and political discourse is getting worse all the time. And it's always been incremental. So it's been, you know, incremental. You didn't really notice unless you were a real student. But now it's obvious because it's just getting worse at such a quick rate of knots. Before I came over, I was telling one of the makeup uh, ladies at CBC that we were coming to see you. And she said, oh, I miss him so much. Mm -hmm. And she said, but he was in here not so long ago. And I realized his accent was thicker. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> I don't know. But you have been spending more time in Newfoundland. Yeah, of And course. has that been good? Oh, that's been fantastic. Yeah. I've been back every month since I've gone off the air. And I've only ever felt that. Newfoundland is home, so I don't think that's changed. And I've always uh, wanted to get home more. I've just never been able to. It's nice taking this break and being home a bit more. So if people want to see you, like do you have anything in the hopper that you'd be willing to disclose right now? It, <laughs> I don't have anything in the hopper. 
Uh, I, there's talk of touring, yeah. and uh, with the book, I really enjoyed writing those essays, those stories about being on the road. And now, uh, when I'm going to bed at night, I, I'm always thinking like, oh, why didn't I tell that story in the book? Mm. Or why didn't I? Follow up then about that. There could be another book yeah. about uh, uh, more time on the road, because it, it was a lot of segments. Well, you, at I one covered. point you mentioned that you broke a rib, but you don't tell anybody, you don't say how. So I was like, what? What's that story? <laughs> right. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of that. Yeah. And I just like that part of writing, and, uh, and that was a learning curve for me. So I think there'll be more of that. <laughs> so we saw there, you two have known each other for a while. What strikes you about him? Well, you know, so that was 2008 with that bad haircut, much younger and well-rested person on the plane. And what strikes me about him is, I mean, the reason we struck up a friendship, obviously, is politics. But as soon as you meet him, he gets in your corner and sort of uh, cheers you along a little bit. And I think that's why so many people were willing to talk to him, because he uh, he's just a good listener and he's, he's a lot of fun, as you can tell. I'm just going to do that interview like every Sunday from now on, probably. <laughs> that works for me. <laughs>